Well, let's discuss this now with economist Mark Thornton, senior fellow at the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Uh, Mark, uh, the Bitcoin markets, they've really taken a hit recently anyway, haven't they? What would this arrest do for the Bitcoin itself, its value and its future? Well, this is terrible for the Bitcoin market, at least temporarily. But this was a political event, not a legal or judicial event, this arrest. It was a political event meant to intimidate people in the Bitcoin space. And it was a perfectly foreseeable event as well. But uh, obviously, we can't go into the exact uh, nature of the charges. But d does it not surprise you that he has been arrested for dealing uh, with the Silk Road website, which, of course, was, was closed down and, in effect, laundering money through that? Does, does that not come as a surprise to you? Uh, no, not at all. He was selling his Bitcoins for cash, basically, uh, and facilitating trade, but not actually, at least as far as these charges are concerned, involved in the trade. And basically, he gave a speech last night about the merits of Bitcoin. And in New York City today, they're starting a two-day hearing on the future of Bitcoin right there in New York City where he was arrested. So it fits in right after the speech and right before this public hearing to be held in New York today. But Bitcoin has got a notorious reputation now, hasn't it, by being used by the underworld, by criminals, so they can't be traced and dealing with all sorts of suspect goods. Oh, yeah, but Bitcoin's a small player, even in the illegal transactions. The U.S. dollar is actually the major facilitator of illegal transactions, of drugs, uh, human trafficking, uh, all sorts of nasty businesses. Most of that trade is done with the U.S. dollar, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a small player. It has a small percentage of its uh, transactions are illegal. That's true. But the majority are for legal goods. Uh, whereas the U.S. dollar is the primary player in international trade in illicit items. Yeah, but could Bitcoin eventually become a, a major threat to the dollar? Well, it is a threat, but it, it's, it's, it's something that's not going to happen um, in the next day or the next year. It's going to take some time to develop. And basically, the central bank, the Federal Reserve and central banks around the world can fight off Bitcoin by uh, providing a more stable uh, dollar, a more stable euro, uh, they're in the business right now of making the world uncertain as to the future of money. And so that's the only reason why Bitcoin was, uh, has become so prominent today. Yeah, it's come prominent is, now, Mark, but is it, is it not a fad that is going to vanish eventually? Well, that's, you know, that's for the history books. We don't know. But I think the chances are is that Bitcoin has some uh, advantages over traditional money that make it uh, look like it's going to have a future or if not Bitcoin, then some form of electronic transmittable uh, monetary uh, systems outside of the purview of central banks. I think that's for certain. Just a quick question. We talked about Silk Road there, and I understand that the U.S. government owns billions worth of, uh, millions, I should say, worth of Bitcoins after the shutdown of that website. But what, what would it be doing with that money, do you think? Well, it's, it's not, they're not the true owner. They're just, uh, they have possession uh, of, of those Bitcoins. I think that they're, uh, you know, governments tend to be, uh, technologically inept, and I'm pretty sure they probably won't know what to do with them for quite some time. But you, you say all this is political and that this is the U.S. government targeting Bitcoin, but w will we see other governments also joining the U.S. and targeting the Bitcoin, seeing it as, as a threat? Well, I think that other countries uh, have, have started to make their intentions known. I think that if they see Bitcoin is becoming a, a problem for them, that they may step in. I think China is worried about people moving capital outside of China, and so they're putting regulations and issuing threats. And, and so I think that that is something that we're going to see is that when Bitcoin becomes a problem for governments, that governments are going to step in and try to regulate them and try to restrict uh, people's access and limit the amount of uh, transactions that take place uh, with Bitcoin relative to their own domestic currency. Mark, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for your thoughts on this. We'll be interested to see what the future for the Bitcoin holds. Thank you very much indeed. Mark thank, Thornton, thank senior you. fellow at Ludwig von Mises Institute. Thanks.